everyone and in this tutorial I want to talk about something called electromagnetic interaction and radiation transfer. So before going on to the more important stuff we need to understand how light works and how uh, using NV and stuff we can use light reflections to tell us what's on the land and stuff like that. So light comes in at an instant energy and in this form I believe it's uh, radiant but I'll get more into that later, I'll tell you about that kind of stuff. But anyway, in its basic form, light comes through as an instant energy and it's either reflected, absorbed, or transmitted. And you can see in this picture behind it that uh, these are ores, and each ore is divided into a different color depending on what that may be. So, we have to talk about some radiative transfer theory. But before we get into that, I just want to tell us about the basics of how light works in terms of like vegetation. So, why is vegetation green? Well, vegetation is green because plants absorb a lot of short and high wavelength energy. This is like blue and red. But it doesn't absorb green very much. This is why plants are green. But plants also don't absorb practically any infrared light. You can see that on the right side of the image. Well, if it doesn't absorb like any infrared light, then why don't we see plants as red? That's because the human eye cannot see uh, infrared light. And so you can see that in this image here where all, like most of the infrared is bounced back up that which isn't absorbed and some of the green is also uh, reflected as well. But the blue and red pretty much just goes straight in. There's always reflections of every light wavelength of every white, sorry, of every light of the spectrum but green and infrared is particularly uh, potent I suppose you could say. And so the light that is reflected or absorbed is dependent on the amount of biomass. And biomass is the living material of uh, plant life, not the accumulated dead material. And so in this image here, you can see generally how sensors work in terms of using light. And light is lost through absorption or reflection in any of these points in time through the atmosphere, through water surface, through plants, through the type of soil, through the amount of sediment in the water, and uh, and like cloud cover and other physical and atomic level stuff. So moving on, we have to talk about spectral reflectance signatures in order to get more into this. So light, uh, let me just find where I'm at. If we went into each pixel of an image, it has a certain number of bands, and if we had an object that was reflecting all of the light in that pixel, its reflectance value would be a horizontal line, or 1. So that would mean that all the bands have full 255 reflectance value. That means that nothing would be absorbed. However, this is uh, you know, pretty much impossible in real life. And so moving on to this next image, here we have three different eucalyptus leaves. So those are the three lines, uh, the green, the pink, and the blue. Uh, as you can see, the shorter wavelengths, blue, green, and red, <coughs> um, have higher frequency. And so they're absorbed, and the longer wavelengths, which are the infrared, if you see along the bottom of the wavelengths, 700 to like 1300, uh, those are reflected because um, the, the, the plant leaves cannot absorb these uh, light frequencies, these wavelengths. So 300 to 700 will be mostly absorbed except for uh, green which is around 500-ish, that's why you see that, that up dip. And then it dips back down to red and then it shoots straight up for infrared because that has really high reflectance, it's almost near one and it dips back down again for water because um, the water water will be able to absorb some of that infrared but the plants won't which is why it dips up and down so here's a few different uh, materials uh, you can see that everything uh, is very different in its amount of absorption and reflectance you can see vegetation is that green line which I just talked about it can't absorb infrared so it shoots up uh, water is a fair bit different. It can absorb pretty much everything. You can see that the reflectance is, it starts at like 8 and then it works its way down to 0 and everything beyond infrared 
which would be, I think that's ultraviolet light or something, none of that can be absorbed. Oh, sorry, all of that can be absorbed, but none of it can be reflected because the reflectance is so low. And so, moving on, we have to talk about radiation principles and properties. So, radiation uh, light, in other words, can come in forms of either physical or atomic. So, in its physical form, uh, we we're talking about EMR wave and particle theories. Remember, EMR is electromagnetic radiation. And so we're trying to explain spectral, spectral signatures done at a physical and molecular level. level. Sorry, <laughs> the way I said that twice. So EMR is composed of discrete units of energy, or photons. And at the physical level, we have the wave theory. I can't remember who said it, but just it's wave theory. And it's that um, if you have any object which is emitting electromagnetic energy, like the sun, also us people, everyone is emitting energy, it's just that humans emit way less than the sun. But in any form, it emits photons. And they have a certain amount of energy. As they move from the source, i.e. the sun or a body, Earth, human body, something like that, they have an electric field and a magnetic field which are perpendicular to each other. And you can see that as these two different axes, as these red arrows show. So uh, one is up and down, so like X and Y, and the other would be... Uh, the other would be like Z. So one up and down and one uh, across. And if you change the amount of energy in that photon, the height of those two fields will change. So if you increase or decrease energy, those waves will either increase in height or they'll decrease in height. And all EMR travels at the same speed. So all electromagnetic radiation, it all travels at the same speed. Light always goes as fast as it will ever go. The speed of light does not change depend on color. But wavelength does vary. So if I have blue light, which has um, high frequency and short wavelength, the energy is going really, really fast and there's lots of uh, kinetic energy in it. It's going really, really quickly. Uh, and red light, which has very uh, low frequency and high wavelength, meaning it's like an ocean, so each wave takes a while before the next wave will come, both those colours go at the same speed as each other. They will reach the same destination from the sun to the earth at the same point in time, but their waves will be different. So they'll get there at the same point in time, but uh, they will look different. Uh, that's <laughs> kind of as simple as I can make it. They're, they look different because they have different waves, so they make different colors. And so, uh, yeah, light has physical and atomic properties. And so the, at the atomic properties is the particle theory. And the topmost curve of this is the sun, the bottommost is the earth. And you can see Planck's equation on the left, which is uh, for the EM EMR emitted at a specific wavelength, and frequency. So it just says that log, sorry, long wavelengths have less energy than short wavelengths, which is what I just said before. If something is moving very, very quickly, it's got a lot of energy and it's got a high frequency, but if something is moving slowly, uh, then it has long wavelengths because it's just slowly going up and down rather than something shooting up and down really, really quickly, which will have lots of energy. So that's all that the atomic level tells us. And so this is the electromagnetic spectrum, and so we're just talking about the EMR properties of the spectrum. So you can see, this is actually backwards, uh, just so you know, I can't flip it, otherwise the words will be backwards, but uh, radio waves are on the high end of the wavelengths, which means that radio waves have less energy than hard X-rays, which have shorter wavelengths. So as I said before, the radio waves is 10 to the 3, meaning that each wave is very long and very weak. But if you look at hard x-rays, which is 10 to the negative 12, the, the waves are very, very short and very, very quick, and they're moving really, very quickly, and they've got tons of energy. So that's how you can look at this if you want to tell which one has more energy. Uh, yeah, and you can tell, like, as I said before, if I go back, uh, the E, E goes up and down, 
And so hard X-rays, their waves would probably be uh, the waves would be taller and skinnier, and the radial waves, their waves be longer and fatter, longer and wider, I should say. And so uh, our human eyes, we can only see blue, green, and red, uh, and waves that are longer and shorter than this, we cannot see with the human eye, which is why we can't see plants as uh, in infrared light. And this brings us to EMR measurement units. So electromagnetic waves can be measured in any of the, the terms that you see on the left. And if you're looking at uh, radiance, this one here, SR, that essentially is, um, it refers to a 3D angle that relates to a camera's field of view. So if you think of a camera and it shoots out ahead of it, that area that it's looking at, that would be a radiance. A steradian unit, as it's referred to. And so, moving on, we're talking about EMR's interactions with the atmosphere. And so, as I said before, you have instant energy which can be reflected, absorbed, or transmitted. And if you add reflected, absorbed, and transmitted energy, that should be equal to the instant energy, which is equal to 1. And so, when the EM energy does not match the energy levels required for absorption, it is either transmitted or it must be reflected depending on the object's transparency, allowing transmission through, and opacity results in reflectance. So reflectance plus transmittance plus absorption equals one. So talking about scattering, and so what is, this is basically just saying is that if the EMR wavelength is smaller than particles, then uh, the particles won't really affect the EMR in any way, but if the particles are bigger than the wavelengths, then it will disturb uh, the light coming in. And so all scattering produces additive path uh, radiance. Meaning that, uh, so whenever light is scattered, it's no longer uh, untouched irradiant sunlight, it's now radiant light. And so here you can see this is a graph of January and different days. And uh, the aerosol optical thickness changes on each day depending on how much um, what's it called how, how many particles are in there in the air and how big they are compared to the wavelengths coming in at that day now we can move on to absorption so absorption refers to reducing the amount of incident solar radiation that is reflected or emitted traveling to a sensor so all this is saying is that in the atmosphere there are major absorbers of uh, light that's reflected or coming in in its uh, radiant natural sunlight form. So the absorbers in the atmosphere include like uh, water vapor, so H2O, uh, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and nitrogen. And so uh, here are the atmospheric absorption effects on irradiance. Remember irradiance is sunlight, radiance is reflected light. So radiance comes after irradiance. So you can see the top level, which is the top of uh, the atmosphere, and then you have the ground level. And so the different wavelengths will be uh, reflected or, or absorbed depending on that wavelength. So you can see that the very, very small wavelength, which will be RGB, which is less than that 0 0.5 there, uh, that's being, that would be mostly absorbed. And the higher wavelengths, which would be your infrareds, that would be the, um, reflected back up again. And this moves on to transmission, which is basically just uh, depending on the object's transparency, allowing transmission through it, which is pretty easy to do. So it just is light going through it, if it's able to. And so this moves on to the next section, which is EMR's interaction with the Earth's surface. And so uh, this can come in the form of either spectral radiance, which is the amount of EMR incident on a surface from a specific direction in a specific wavelength. So it's just the amount of light coming in in its irradiant sunlight form, specific direction. And then you have spectral reflectance, which is the ratio of amount of light reflected from a surface, radiance, to the amount of EMR incident on a surface, or the irradiance, the sunlight. And then you have diffuse reflectance, which is ideally when the EMR is reflected 
equally in all directions after hitting an object. So if the sunlight comes down and it hits a rock or a wall for a person or something, ideally you want the light to reflect back in every single direction equally. You don't want the light uh, diffusing in one direction more than any other. And then you have specular reflectance, which is ideally when a single EMI is reflected away. So uh, in specular reflectance you want the light to come in to hit uh, open ground and then reflect again in a single direction in a single beam without being diffused. So you don't want light to lose its energy, more or less. And the amount of EMR recorded in a pixel depends on how much the sun hits the ground and then how much of that hits the sensor without being lost, if that makes sense. Another thing we should go through is spectral reflectance curves and signatures. So spectral curves or signatures are the fingerprints of different targets that can be used to identify them in remotely sensed images. So it, you want to know a fingerprint of a target, so like a tree is a tree, you know it just by looking at the, the fingerprint of it, the signature of it, the spectral curve of it. And so there are, a few effect, there are a few factors affecting the spectral signatures, and this can be either the solar uh, elevation, so where the sun is in the sky, uh, the aspect, which is uh, kind of like the angle, more or less, uh, the slope, uh, so more or less kind of like different elevations. And then you have atmosphere, so what's in the air at the time, the phenology, which is uh, um, light hitting different tree species, for example, or different heights of trees, will that give you different information? And then you also have soil background, so whatever the object is on will also affect the picture. And next you have radiation uh, transfer theory. Radiation transfer and interaction pathways for remote sensing. So all remotely sensed data are a result of radiation interactions. And so the key is to maximize accuracy and amount inf of info gotten from remote sensing data. And so there are a couple types of remote sensing and those are either the active remote sensing where EMR is sent and received so you're, you yourself are sending the light and you're obtaining it and then you have passive remote sensing where you're using the sunlight and EMI is only received so you're not sending your own light you're just receiving light that has already been sent by a passive existing source and yeah that should be the end of this video so hopefully you've learned some stuff about light from this and in our coming tutorial which I haven't even worked out yet. We're going to be doing some more NV in that. So good luck, guys.